Hello, this is a B Simulator Ultimate Guide for new and old players. I've made this in hopes of new players understanding the game better and could even be helpful for veteran players like myself. Firstly, what is B Simulator? Well, B Simulator is a dinosaur survival game with very unique and exciting abilities within the game. B Simulator is set in an undiscovered island chain located inside of the modern day Simulator Triangle. B Simulator is currently early access and it is owned by Sastry Studios, I hope I'm saying that right. B Simulator is also the first game to have a fully functional snake with realistic movement. So, moving past that, how do I play B Simulator? So, firstly, when going into server select or multiplayer, there is basically two options there is an official service or the private servers. So I'm going to be doing official servers. In my opinion, official servers are vastly superior to community servers, but everyone has their own preference. They are also the intended experience for the game, but community servers have customization that enables it to be basically whatever it wants it to be. So we will be playing on official to East US. Now this server is known for its toxicity and KOSing, but it's really not that bad if you um, just get used to it a little bit. It takes a little bit to get into a beast computer, so don't be alarmed by the long waiting times. I also have a bad PC, so I could also be why. So upon loading into Official 2, you'll either have a bunch of empty slots, or you will be spawned right into this screen right here. So we have basically five options to choose from. We have herbivores, carnivores, flyers, marine, and eggs. Eggs are basically the offspring of any of the previous four options and could potentially be a good start for a new player. Because if you select someone's egg, they might teach you the ropes, which a lot of friendly players do. So then, which option should I pick as a new player? In my opinion, herbivores or flyers are best for new players. Herbivore is just easiest to play in my opinion, and flyers, you could really learn the map. So, starting out as a herbivore, I would personally pick Parasaurolophus. The dinosaur was quite fast, but also tanky and strong enough for a new player to get it, the hang of. The dinosaur was also popular among herbivores, so you could most likely easy, easily get a herd going. So currently my Parasaurolophus is 0.9, but your Parasaurolophus will be 0.4 when you first spawn in. So first things that we really need to get into is the most important thing of this entire video is the help tool. This, if you press escape, it's right here. You press help and then obviously under construction it's not done yet but it's it's literally got everything that you could need introduction it's basically the first thing you want to do when loading into this game is just read this oh oh okay uh we just died <laughs> okay um that was an unexpected start Alright, so as I was saying, the help tool is the most important thing for a new player. So basically, you kind of just want to read through this. Some things are empty at the moment. It's a current work in progress. Reminder that Bishimura is very early access at the moment. It's got a very small dev team as well. But this is a really helpful like information area. So you can just read this before even starting, in my opinion. I don't even know some of the things on here. I haven't read it all. Which I probably should. Alright, so the next important thing is this compass. So I'm pretty sure the default button to sniff is C. I have mine to Q. So if you press Q, there's a bunch of things on the map, which might be a bit overwhelming for a new player, but it's pretty simple. The water droplet means there is a water source. So if you run to that, then there will be water here. You can also see a water source by a large bar that appears above the water source, which is really helpful. Secondly, we will have random dinosaur icons. A dinosaur icon on the compass means there is a dinosaur currently residing or has been residing in that area for a long time. And then we have some symbols like this, which I will get to soon. So probably the next most important thing is the diets and the food. So how do I get food? Now we know how to get water. We just smell for a water source and then we come here, we pressed our interact key and hold it and we drink but for food it's slightly different so if you sniff your food that you can eat will light up bright blue for a few seconds now you can eat basically anything on the map except really big trees you just have to be big enough there's also random fat plants this is a very delicious plant 
So fat plants give you a bunch of food. They're quite rare. So we just found one. So we're going to eat that. And you can see our food go up a bunch. So if you press O, and you can see a bunch of information. We have your health, ability, power, and stamina. Ability power is how much attack. It's basically like, like stamina, but for attacking. So if you attack too much, your ability power will run out and you won't be able to attack anymore. We have comfort. If you keep your comfort high, you will grow faster and you will heal faster. If you have low comfort, then you will start taking comfort damage. Bias is basically if you eat good flowers, then your bias will go up, which will in turn make your comfort go up. And then you, your food bar, your water bar, and then we have diet. So you can press a summary of our diet. It'll basically give you a bunch of information. But all we need to know is our diet consists of plants and salt. With herbivores, you can get salt by going onto beaches like so and just kind of inhaling salt. So you can see some little salt rocks here. And we're just going to hold our interact key, which will eat all the salt. And then our salt diet is at 303%, so that is good. And we have our weight, our shelter. So this game has a really unique weather system. As you can see right now, it's actually raining, which in turn will kind of lower our comfort unless we have weather resistance. I'll get into talents more soon, but basically you can actually get struck by lightning, which is really funny sometimes, can be frustrating, but if you don't have a hundred percent shelter in a storm, you will you will, you have a chance to get struck by lightning, which will basically insta kill you unless you're a very tanky dinosaur. And favor, I'm not even going to go into favor because it's not a finished system, and it's a current work in progress. Another really important thing for Bismuda is the skin customization. People play Bismuda just for the skin customization. You can literally do anything you want with this, with your dinosaur. You can make it like neon pink if you really want, but obviously don't do that because then you'll get found really easily. But you have the option of doing so, which is really cool. You can also randomize your skin and just do completely random things with it, which is so cool. There's also a bunch of skins to choose from on each dinosaur. I'm just gonna random skin until I get the thing I want. Yeah, that's a pretty nice skin. So. Now, the next most important thing on this guide video is the talent tree. The talent tree can be really um, overwhelming for a new player, as well as many things in this game, but it's honestly really easy if you understand it. All you need to know is the one at the top is the speed part of the talent tree, this part is the combat side of the talent tree, and this part is the survival part of the talent tree. The speed part of the talent tree, you can probably guess that it that there's talents that make you faster. So each talent, you can have the maximum of three points into it. And there are also inherits, which count as talent points, kind of. They're like talent points, but weaker, that you can either get from being a spawn dinosaur, a reincarnated dinosaur, or a nested dinosaur. So right now, I am a nested dinosaur, and that means I will get inherits that my parents have points into. That means if my parents had, let's say, three out of three aqua affinity, then I have a chance of getting plus two or plus one aqua affinity, but I also have a chance of getting nothing at all. There is a total of 30 talents. Now what's helpful is that if you hover over talent, it will show you exactly what it does. So my build right now is two out of three aqua affinity, two sneaky, which makes me slower. And this increases my swim speed, strong legs, which increases m my speed running uphill. I also have Long Runner, which, which allows me to run for longer distances. I have Endurance, which increases total stamina pool. Nimble Footed, which increases my turn rate. And Swiftness, increases my speed. There is, there is so many talents, I can't really go over them. But just hover over them and see what really intrigues your interests and go for it. So how you put talent point is you just click it. You can click it a maximum amount of three times. Okay, and another helpful thing. If you have a group open, you can do that by inviting people. You can summon people. So my friend Anola has slash summoned to Primkin. Obviously, I can't do the command, but they did. And you can summon to your friend. You can invite people by typing in chat slash invite and then their name. So for example, we're going to do slash invite Anola. 
but they're already in our group, so it doesn't count. To change between chats is you have to type slash all or slash local or slash herd pack, depending if you're a herbivore or carnivore. And if you want a private message, you can type private message and then. And you can also tab through these chats by pressing tab. Obviously, all is speaking to everyone in global chat. Local is everyone in your immediate area. And herd is for the people in your group. So upon playing Titania, you will find shrines. Shrines do different things. For example, you can pledge, you can bless, and you, or you can take a trinket from a shrine. You can also see your current trial scores. So trial scores are basically how well you've played your dinosaur. You can press O and then this little circle thing. You can see trials. Travel distance is our champion, which is 100%. The higher your trials are, the better your reincarnations will be, which I'll touch up later on. So for now, we're going to be taking a trinket from the shrine. There are currently three shrines on the map. There is a combat shrine, survival shrine, and a speed shrine. We're going to take the survival trinket and we're going to bring it to a speed shrine. This will give us a growth boost. You can bring a trinket to a shrine as long as it's not a trinket of the same kind. So you can't bring a speed trinket to a speed shrine and you can't bring a survival shrine, a survival trinket to a survival shrine. You can only bring a trinket of another shrine to that shrine. Bringing a trinket to another shrine gives multiple benefits. So if you bring a trinket to a speed shrine, you will grow faster at the cost of higher food drain and water drain. If you bring a trinket to the survival shrine, then you will give better nesting and have an easier time nesting. If you bring a trinket to the combat shrine, you will have an easier time reviving, all at the cost of higher food and water ticks. But generally, people always speed less until they're big enough to not need it anymore. And survival and combat blessings aren't as popular. So you may be wondering, how do I grow and be civil? Well, you grow by keeping your water and food up and your comfort. And you can basically just grow infantry. So if you get to 1.32 or currently 0 0.78, then you will hit Gauntlet. Then you will have the option of staying that growth or you can enter the Gauntlet. Now, Gauntlet will keep you growing fast, but then your food and your water ticks will slowly and slowly go up until it is almost unmanageable and you will eventually just die off. So in order for us to grow a bit quicker, we are going to speed that. So we just brought a trinket to the speed shrine and we clicked blessing. And you can choose to do 30 minutes or 60 minutes. You can read that. It basically just says if you take this blessing, you will grow faster for the selected time, but you will have an increased water and food drain, which is helpful. Ooh, I have just gotten a bunch of inherits. So inherits, again, are basically just extra talent points that are slightly weaker that you get from your parents. It is best to have a dinosaur with lots of inherits because that means slightly better than if you had no inherits at all. So for persistence, increases maximum ability power. That means I can attack more than other people. But again, these inherits are not very strong as they used to be, but it is very helpful. So around the map are occasional portals. So you can just walk right into this big glowy orb and you will be teleported into a new spot. It'll take a second to load though, which is understandable. And half the game is kind of just running around and having fun with friends. So we are going to press tab. We can see the player count, we can see everyone in our group, we can see group finder. So if you're the same dinosaur or if your dinosaur can help with other things, you can join them. We are going to be posting group. So we're going to say Parasaurolophus family. Certain dinosaurs on Beast Muda can herd with other dinosaurs. For example, Parasaurolophus can herd with Apatosaurus and Cyclina can herd with Ori. This game is also very pretty sometimes, if you have high graphics. Right now I'm running on pretty high graphics since I recently upgraded my computer. And it is just absolutely amazing to look at. I'm not really going to go into settings much because there's so many settings to go through and you can kind of just play with them until you're happy with your game. We just found a snake. If you sniff 
per player, then they will highlight their build. So this build, so this snake's build is a triad build, I think. This guy, I think, is AFK. Look at him. So cute. We're gonna kill him. The number one rule in Beast Muda, do not go AFK. People will not spare you, especially me. Do not end up like that guy. And as you could see, we got hunt points from killing. Um, obviously he wasn't very big, so we didn't get many hunt points. Hunt points count towards a trial. So we can see our hunt points is currently on 823, which is at 100% for us. There's basically trials for everything in this game, like water sources visited and stuff like that. We're going to go into creature select so we can look at our trials. Alright, we are in my creature select. So we can see Parasol if it's 0.9 growth and it is a female. If we press this little button here, we can see our talent tree and we can see our trials. But what I'm looking at is my ascents of my trials. So mobility is at 77%. Power is at 83% and survival is at 52%. So basically the higher your percents are, the better inherits you will have upon re -entry. As you can see when we died the first time, we had the option of resurrection or reincarnation. So resurrection is basically just reviving your dinosaur that will come at a smaller growth. Or we have the option of reincarnation. Now reincarnation was added for solo players to have a chance of competing with super nested players in the game. So the incarnation is basically like nesting with yourself. Basically, if you have three out of three a talent with good trials, you will most likely get a plus one or plus two in that talent. If you have only one out of three, then you won't really have much luck. Inherits are very good in Beast Simulator, so try to get as many inherits as you can by completing your trials and reincarnating. That's what I do. Ooh, if we sniff on the compass, we can see a bright yellow kind of cloud. That is a scent of either an Apatosaurus or Acrocanthosaurus. So we're going to go check that out. Ooh, over there. Ooh, you can also find salt inland. An inland salt deposit, some animals lick them. So we're going to eat right next to it, and we're just going to inhale all that salt. And that will keep our diet higher. If we have a bad diet, where it's in like this gray area, then we have the chance of getting sick if we're past one point to grow. Getting sick will basically stop your stamina and ability power from regenerating, and it will make your food and water ticks a lot higher. So if you're sick, you can actually eat these charcoals, which is right in front of me. So if you eat enough charcoals, you will be healed from your sickness, and then you will be recovering from sickness, and then you will have to lie down just to kind of heal it. So try your best not to get sick. You can also get sick if you eat poisonous mushrooms, so be careful of eating that. Ooh, we have found the Acrocanthosaurus, which that is a very large family of them, so we're gonna have to be very careful. I'm gonna go up to them and try to duel one of them though, so hopefully that goes well. And they don't kill me right after. So in Bishimuda there was five calls. We have Broadcast, Friendly, Aggressive, submissive and distress call. So you can go into this emote wheel by holding B. You can also type in chat to your friends. For example, we just said hello. Okay, we're two calling them. I'm trying to duel this acro. I want to duel him. I hope he's going to accept. Oh, it, he doesn't want to duel. I'm going to ask if this guy wants to duel. Come on. You want to duel? Okay, I don't think these guys want to duel. That's sad, but you know, can't force them to, I guess. So right now they are trying to circle me so they can ambush me, which is not going to happen. Kind of sad that they didn't want to duel, but it's whatever. I was hoping we could duel one of them so I could show a bit of the combat, but I guess I'll just do combat on my own. So Crashorpus has two attacks. It has Headbutt, which is just a standard attack, which deals a little bit of damage which is left click and then it has a stomp which is right click stomp does a bunch more damage than headbutt and it can also cripple things you guys you think they'd let me drink here with them we chill right yeah we chill
Die. Oh, we got him. <laughs> okay, we got one before we died. That was surprising. Okay, so as you can see, we have been slain. Now, upon dying, we have two options. Resurrect or reincarnate. So if we hover over resurrect, we can offer something to resurrect our creature. We are required to have something that has 24 power trials, 24 speech trials, and 24 survival trials. That ichthy is not enough to resurrect. Usually, it's not even worth using something to resurrect. We can just normally resurrect it, and we'll just go back to, like, 0.5 or 0.6. So we're going to do that. I wanted to quickly go over Para's abilities and stuff like that, but that's basically the average herbivore. Obviously, every herbivore has different abilities, but you can kind of just hop on a random one and just press buttons on your keyboard and see what they do. So for flyers, I feel are really helpful for a new player. We are going to be playing Tropiog Nathus. Flyers are helpful to kind of just explore the map, because this map, which is Titania, is huge. So to take off, you press spacebar and you press sprint. sprint. So you press spacebar and sprint to take off flying. The flying mechanics in Beast Mirror are honestly amazing. It's the best out of any game I've ever played. You can do literally anything in the air. If you fly upwards, you press sprint and space again. But you have to watch your stamina, because if you have no stamina, you can't go upwards. And you can go downwards to collect momentum, and then you can go upwards even higher. There's also talents to make flying easier, like strong wings, and quick takeoff, which makes you take off the ground a lot quicker. And a bunch of other helpful talents for flyers. So right now we're just gonna fly around the map really quick while I talk about the smoother. Okay, so a world event has spawned. World events are randomly occurring events that will give certain buffs. So for this one, it is great nesting site and unlocked skin editing. So that means great nesting site is you will have an easier time nesting and your children will have better inherits. And unlocked skin editing means that you will have basically you're basically able to change your skin no matter what growth you are. Usually you can only change your skin up to 0.8 but then you will be locked from it. You can go into a world event radius by sniffing your compass and you'll see that big yellow thing on the compass. If you just keep walking towards it, you'll eventually find it, but for us, we're going to fly to it. Now, I'm pretty sure that North Star is North, and the Sun is South, but I'm honestly really not sure, I can't remember. It's something like that. And also, if you venture upon a new biome, it will show a pop-up at the top that says Ventured Upon and the name of the biome. So for us, we have ventured into Titan's Rise. And you can see over there, that is a shrine right there. The survival shrine, to be exact. So when we're at a shrine, we can either... A big shrine. So we can either sacrifice or pledge. Sacrificing and pledging cannot, like, coexist. So you can't have the pledge and sacrifice at the same time. The sacrifice will always cancel out the pledge because sacrificing is stronger. So pledging. If you have, like, let's say, 93% combat and 96% speed, and your survival is 40%. It will match your second lowest trial. So it will match, for example, if your combat is 96 and your speed is 93, it will match 93. That is, it is really helpful to do so, especially if you're lacking in a certain trial. Sacrificing, however, will match your highest trial for the thing you are sacrificing to. But sacrificing will kill you. Pledging will only come into effect once you die on the creature, basically. Just remember that I'm a player as well, I make mistakes, so don't take everything I say as like an absolute fact. Uh, ask around, test things for yourself. So as you can see, if we sniff on the compass, a big highlight thing will pop up that's basically just showing what the event is. So that bottom little icon is the great nesting site, the top one is the skin editing. So. Basically, a world event is a giant dome that you can go into. You'll see at the top left, pending world event. So 
now we are in the world event and we kind of just wait for things to happen here. So for flyers, they are on a fish and meat style. So you can find meat by kind of just killing AI or you can eat fish. So if you hover over a river or an ocean, you'll see fish that light up. If you bite the fish, then you will see your food and water will go up. So we're going to bite a bunch of fish to get food. Alright, so we have a lot of food now. Now we're just going to get water. You can basically drink from any water source. However, if the water source is dirty, you will get sick probably. So most of the population is on snakes, which are pretty hard to find. So we're not going to be seeing a lot of people. Oh, and also purple flowers. These things right here will give health if you eat them. So if, for example, we just ate that and okay, since we're full health, it doesn't really show anything, but it will heal us if we are low on health. And again, yellow flowers will give us comfort bias, which in turn makes our comfort go up, which will make us grow faster. It will make our ability regenerate faster. It will make our stamina and health come back faster which is really cool. Now we're playing a carnival, the newest playable Paleophis. So Paleophis is a carnival and it is the newest addition to Beast Simulator. It is probably the most anticipated dinosaur in Beast Simulator and that is probably why you're even watching this video. So a little guide on carnivals is like, just like Parasaurolophus, a herbivore, you have water and meat needed to eat. So to find water, you do the same thing as Parasaurolophus. You look on the compass and you look for water and you look for meat. So how you find meat, well, you can either use your sniff keybind and look for red things that pop up, just like that right there. We're going to go run to that. So right here, we can see that there is a gore here. It's basically food for carnivores and we can just eat it right here. They randomly spawn throughout the map. Right now we're in our eating animation. It looks kind of silly. Okay, now that we've gotten a, bunch, a bit of food, we can go look for some water. Paleophis is really unique because it has three different subspecies. I've made a video on land Paleophis and aquatic Paleophis. I'm just going to make a video on subaquatic Paleophis. I haven't actually played that one yet. I'm currently on a land Paleo and I might make another land Paleo video. Let me know if you want to see that, because I got a really nice mix skin. It's pretty straightforward. You kind of just like run at things, you bite. An important thing to note for Paleo is that it has huggable venom. So with venom, you so with venom bites, you will obviously add venom to your prey, but with dry bites, you will do more damage. So you kind of have to pick your poison, kind of. <laughs> with what Venom basically does is that it sort of um, reduces the rate at which your prey's ability and stamina regenerate. So it's pretty helpful if you're trying to like wear down your prey. However, dry bites just get the job done quicker, so it's really up to you. Another important kind of thing for Paleo is that I can climb trees to escape things. So if we just hold spacebar, then we're kind of just ascending this little tree. The, the mechanics on Paleo is so cool. It's like, what, what other game can you do this in? Like, look at this. It's just incredible. Also, Paleophus has a ability called Regurgitate. So you can regurgitate a bit of food in order to get Frenzy. Now, Frenzy will make you faster. So look how fast I'm going right now. And watch me press my ability key, which is probably Z for you. I'm going to go a whole bunch faster. This is basically just an escape tool or if you're like running down really quick prey. We have just found an AI. So randomly you'll see little AI critters around the map. If you smell them, you can highlight them on the map. You can hit them and then they will drop a little gore for you to eat. It's really cool. I'm struggling to eat. Did the server crash? I did not. Oh. Oh my gosh, I forgot my own eat keybind. I'm an actual idiot. <laughs> and also, if you find little crystals, eating these will give you comfort bias, which will increase your comfort. Oh, there's a paleo right there. I'm not gonna try and get near that. I'm scared.
Oh, there's a bunch of paleos here. I'm gonna ask to duel one of them. Oh, come on. He's killing me. That's, that's a bit mean. Okay, I'm gonna get out of here. I do not want to get got by these paleos. As I tell you, the official servers are a rough place. It's not exactly very, uh, forgiving to a new player. Especially like so. But we are going to try and kill- Oh! Okay. Um... As I was saying, the official servers are a pretty rough place. There's cannibals, stuff like that, but overall it's pretty chill. Now I must note that um, if you play an aquatic, there is something that you need to know. You need to know that y y you need to breathe. So you, you see your food bar and there's a little water bar. To breathe, you have to go to the surface and just hold your interact key. That will fill up your breath bar. I see a lot of new players not know how to breathe and they just like kind of die. So that pretty much wraps up my tutorial or my guide. I hope it has helped you in some way. I do plan to make individual guides for individual creatures because I can't really go over every single one of them in one video. So stick around for that. Let me know what you thought of this video in the comments. So thank you. Bye bye.